I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Israeli News Live here in Prague in uh, the Czech Republic, the revived European, or excuse me, the revived Roman Empire, I should say. And behind me is a Catholic Church here. Adorned on top of the Catholic Church is the Pope in a burst of the sun. The sun is wrapped around him. Everywhere you see here in uh, this particular part of the world, we find all the images and exaltations of the Vatican. It kind of takes me back to the times in the Bible when Balak wanted to curse Israel. So he called upon Balaam to go and curse Israel. Now interestingly, the Bible says in the book of Numbers, the 22nd chapter, he talks about bringing in uh, the, the noblemen from Midia. Now we have to remember in Midia is where Jethro is from, Mo Moses' father-in-law. And Jethro is a type of the true believing church. So why is it then that Balak was actually consulting from, a, from Midia, a country that was known to have true believers? Now the question is, though, Balaam, who was anointed of God, did in fact bless Israel and refuse to curse Israel and would say only those things that God would say. But there was one interesting statement that Balaam does make. Of course, we know that Balaam does go against God. Let me remind you of that. We all know that because God didn't want him going in the first place. God's first will was for him not to curse Israel, to leave Israel out of this because Israel was blessed. But because he kept getting offered a greater, more nobler place, Balaam finally went back and consulted God again. This time God giving permission to go, but the anger of God was kindled against Balaam and he had the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And of course, if it wasn't for his donkey, for what she did for him, God would have slew him right there for his willingness to go after Balak and Balak's desire to curse Israel. But one important statement, as I mentioned a, minute, a moment ago, that really caught my attention is when Balaam actually makes a comment Though Balak were to give me all his house with its silver and gold, I would not speak a word other than what God puts in my mouth. Yet when we look at the Pope of Rome, and the, Euro the revived Roman Empire, and the European Union here, it is evident that the Pope of Rome did not go in the same shoes as Balaam. In fact, he followed in the very footsteps of Balak and has obeyed the very desire of Balak. He has cursed the children of Israel. He has also accepted Balak's house of silver and gold. Inside that building behind me, what is called a church for the Roman Catholic Church, part of the Roman Empire here in Prague, it is adorned with gold, unbelievable. It is obvious that the Balaam of today that once refused the silver of the house of Balak and his gold, the Pope of Rome took him up on it. I wonder why Judas is a perfect type of the Pope of Rome. Claims to be one of the apostles. Claims to be, as they said, Peter took, was the first Pope. Peter was never the first Pope. But Judas Issachariot would have made a fine example for the Catholic Church today. I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Israeli News Live. Live in Prague, in the Czech Republic, the revived Roman Empire.